Working for the Red Cross in my role, I help to lead our partnership strategy, coalescing uh, a broad uh, spectrum of stakeholders from community organizations to faith organizations and corporations. Um, so the Meta Leadership Framework has really given me the tools to analyze and assess how I'm performing as a leader. Um, it's helped to give me an increased sense of awareness of what my strengths are, um, areas that I can improve. Um, so I would say, in a nutshell, definitely an increased level of self-awareness as a leader. Um, it's also given me exposure to other concepts, um, a different way of thinking on how to approach a challenge or an opportunity. Um, and we've talked about things as uh, leading up, leading across, leading out with other organizations, individuals, how to negotiate through those types of situations. So the overall framework has given me a real sense of confidence when we run into and encounter different crisis situations and really try to transform those crisis situations into opportunities. What I've learned about myself is, uh, I think more definitively, what my comfort zones are. Um, and an awareness and a willingness and a desire to focus on some other areas that I can improve upon. Um, so what I have learned about myself is that I am pretty uh, deliberate and persevering in trying to lead across um, so interfacing with a lot of external constituents. Um, but the area that I really want to focus in on and challenge myself a bit more is how I can motivate um, people that I'm leading from within. So at the Red Cross that would include my staff at headquarters, but it also um, includes the hundreds and thousands of volunteers that we mobilize in times of dis uh, disaster response. Um, so the challenge of really figuring out how to genuinely lead um, others, um, so leading down, um, that's, that's probably an area that I, I really definitely want to work on moving forward. You know, even earlier this year in 2010, we continued to experience a lot of disaster events. Um, I think the set of tornadoes that hit in April down in Jackson, Mississippi, in rural areas of Mississippi, um, we will immediately mobilize local volunteers, volunteers from the region to do anything from feeding and sheltering to handling government relations, working with elected officials, working with advocacy organizations that are concerned about individuals whose needs are unmet. Um, so balancing different political dynamics, sometimes people would view them as competing dynamics. And so for that individual volunteer, they have a lot of responsibility, um, but helping to share a meta leadership framework with our volunteers to recognize that they have the opportunity to make a bigger impact in the larger picture of disaster response um, and getting them to take a step up, if you will, to the, to the leadership platform um, and try to resolve some of the competing interests that may arise in the middle of a disaster response. I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges um, and I've gained a greater appreciation, awareness, um, trying to develop some strategies and tactics on leading up, trying to better anticipate what my superiors might need in terms of different strategies that they're anticipating and are contemplating. Um, also competing dynamics um, and I think balancing the responsibility of trying to lead up as well as my own sense of awareness um, working through and balancing uh, what I need to do as a leader um, but also ensuring that 
I'm performing well, uh, leading up and, and giving my bosses the information and tools that they need to succeed. Trying to share with staff um, this concept of um, a larger framework, um, a larger team framework, um, actually taking the time for discussion and dialogue um, so there's more uh, shared team decision-making uh, decision processes um, and analyzing possible solutions and challenges. Um, in a disaster response environment, I think it's very easy to default to sort of a command and control environment and stating that those with the most level of expertise, whether it's the number of disaster operations they've deployed on um, or the number of years they've served with the organization, um, that it would be an individualized decision-making process. Um, but helping and encouraging staff to have a sense of empowerment um, and giving them, sharing with them the opportunity um, to lead across as well, um, instead of my, my holding uh, that leadership opportunity just to myself, but sharing that with staff. Leading across, um, so one partnership that I've been, uh, that's very top of mind for me, um, it's been very, very time intensive, um, yet incredibly exciting, um, is a new formal partnership that the American Red Cross has forged with the National Baptist Convention USA. Um, and just a little bit of background, the formal partnership came into fruition only September of last year, of, of 2009, uh, 2009. And the National Baptist Convention is actually the largest African-American Protestant convention in the United States, um, with over 7.5 million members and 15,000 churches. Um, and so bringing together two organizations on one hand with amazing assets, if you will, you know, disaster lingo, what are our assets and capabilities? So if you look at their churches as the potential to be uh, shelter locations, evacuation centers, amazing assets. Um, and their organization is 100, nearly 130 years old as is the American Red Cross. So on one hand, um, it's really easy, um, almost too easy to think about what our joint cap capacity could be in response, putting uh, almost our 260 years worth of experience together in serving communities. On the other hand, the culture of disaster and American Red Cross, I think folks can understand, is very, very different um, and distinct from a church-oriented culture, and then really candidly and openly a black church culture, and trying to figure out and appreciate leadership protocol, communication protocol, um, the nuances of politics, um, timing, relationship building. Um, that's been an amazing uh, partnership that I've been working on for the last many months. And it's, it's already yielded some amazing results where we've already begun to build out, roll out state level meetings um, where our entire chapter network will come together with their church network. So for example, um, we had a statewide meeting in Georgia, um, which historically we've never had the opportunity to bring our state chapter network, Red Cross chapters together with all of the church leadership of the National Baptist in Georgia. And so if you put a historical backdrop of the Deep South and race relations behind that, um, and then recognize that we are really forging our trust and our communities, and our disaster assets together. It's, uh, it's really a historical partnership, in my opinion. Um, and that 
really great relationship and trust, of course, has taken many, many external explicit conversations, um, some political negotiations, um, but there's been so much promise and trust built there that actually just this last week, so this is timely news, um, we are now taking our partnership to the next level. We're jointly together. We will be launching a national blood donor campaign between the two organizations. Um, so again, when you think about the over 15,000 churches, seven and a half million members of the National Baptist, um, and the work that the Red Cross does in mobilizing blood donations, um, but really extending our reach out into the minority community. Um, these are some historical efforts that neither of our organizations could have produced or accomplished alone in the past. Um, so that would be my primary example of leading across and leading out. Um, and it certainly caught the attention a lot of, of other church organizations, um, the Department of Homeland Security, um, the National Baptist does serve on the President's White House Faith Advisory Council. Um, so it's, it's really engendered a lot of goodwill um, and innovation in terms of partnership building um, to meet humanitarian needs. The number one thing I would state uh, would be the incredible network um, that you will be able to become a part of. So, especially from a leadership perspective. Um, the network of fellow students um, who are incredible leaders in their own individual right, um, but the agencies they represent um, in Homeland Security and disaster and preparedness. Um, there really is no other community um, convening of leaders to come together to further our education. Um, so I would say, number one, you will be able to join such a unique and invaluable network. Um, and it's mobilizing and growing. So get in on it now. <laughs> um, and two, I think the uh, educational leaders, our professors, our faculty advisors here at Harvard, the, having access to a multidisciplinary team between the business school, the public health school, the law school, um, really provides us as individuals exposure to um, faculty that quite frankly we would not have the opportunity to be able to access that type of um, brain trust and knowledge if you will on our own. So I would say the faculty and, and the network. I mean this has just been an amazing opportunity. Um, just such a diverse array of individuals that have come together and um, you know I, I think it's worth stating in the work that we do knowing that we're not doing this alone and that we've had this special opportunity to really meet people that we would not have been able to meet in our in our own right um, and so no doubt amazing professional relationships here have been forged um, but probably more importantly, incredible friendships have been forged. So um, for the Red Cross, I know a few of us now have experienced the MPLI um, initiative. And uh, we're extremely grateful for the opportunity. And uh, I think we're better off and better equipped to serve the public uh, in, in what we do every day. So our, our very sincere thanks to Harvard. <laughs>